Hello, Kidney Warriors. James here from Dadvice TV, your online kidney health coach. And this is Dadvice TV Live. Now, if you're new here, go ahead and tell us in the comments, just like, hey, Brenda did right down here. Welcome, Brenda. Glad to have you here with us. We have a great and supportive community here to help kidney people kick kidney disease to the curb. That way you can live a great life with kidney disease. Just kind of like, yeah, I got kidney disease, but I'm doing great. So for those of you that are new, let me quickly tell you who I am. My name is James. I'm not a doctor. Nope, 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 nope. I'm just a regular person like you. One day, almost two years ago, in, in three weeks, it'll be two years exactly, I was doing pretty bad. I was pretty sick and I had to go to the ER. Well, they kept me there in the ICU for a week. I was in bad, bad shape. That second day they told me, hey James, you got some kidney problems. Your kidneys are failing. Well, while I was in, the G in there, in the ER, they got my GFR up and stable to 13, which isn't a great number, but I was happy with it. Now the doctor, she told me, you need dialysis and you need a transplant. But I was like, hold on, put the brakes on it. I did some research. I started looking and said, hey, doc, give me a chance. Let me try working with the renal dietitian and with some other experts and see if I can turn things around. I was eating bad. I was doing all the wrong things, drinking lots of soda, McDonald's, Burger King, Wendy's, Taco Bell, all that stuff. Well, I worked with doctors. I got better. I didn't go on dialysis. I didn't get a transplant. I made it to stage four. I kept working, taking my labs, working with my doctors, tweaking things, and I got all the way up to stage three. But more importantly, because really I don't care about my GFR. My GFR doesn't tell me anything. I am symptom free and full of energy. Anemia, gone. That metallic taste in my mouth, gone. Not being able to sleep at night, gone. All those problems, gone. I feel amazing. And it was all from simple diet and lifestyle changes. Now my kidneys, they didn't heal themselves. There is no fix, no cure for the physical damage. No supplement, none of that stuff's gonna fix that damage. But what I did was just remove some of the burden by being healthier. And it's not gonna work for everyone, but it's definitely worth trying to see what it can do for you. For me, it completely delayed the need for dialysis. Matter of fact, my doctor says, if I stick to my diet, I can go decades before I even had to start to consider needing dialysis. Now, the one secret to all of this, not a pill, not a tablet, not a tea or anything like that, it was information. And the most important information came from a renal dietitian. And guys, We've got our favorite renal dietitian back here for another Tuesday show, Jen Hernandez. Hey, Jen, how you doing? Hey, James. Hey, everybody. I am doing so great, and you just put a huge smile on my face. Your favorite renal dietitian? I'm yes. Pretty, everyone uh... <laughs> loves Jen. You're awesome. Oh, I feel so special, and it is always so fun to be back here with you and with all of the viewers. Uh, if you guys are new to the show, if you're new to watching Dad Vice, my name is Jen and I am a renal dietitian. So that means I am a registered dietitian. I've gone through my undergrad, I've gone through my internship, took the exam to become a registered dietitian in the United States. And then I did more training, more uh, work with kidney patients, specifically CKD and dialysis. And then I decided to take another test and I became board certified in renal nutrition. And that has been my focus in my own private practice for about the past uh, two years now. I, would, I believe that's what it is. Um, if you guys know me, you know I don't keep track of time. I don't keep track of dates. Um, my husband is, I think, grateful for this. Um, but that is pretty much me in a nutshell. And I am here to share with you all these tips, information about uh, renal nutrition, the renal diet, whether it's CKD or dialysis, because I have worked with both groups. I've worked with all different individuals across the board from stage one to stage five on dialysis and different types of dialysis. So uh, I'm just so grateful as always to be here talking with you, James, today. 
and especially getting into the holidays and all these exciting topics that we have coming up. I am just absolutely thrilled. Oh yeah. And today's topic is you and I were kind of discussing this lines up great with the holidays. And we're, we're always looking for things that we can add to our diet that can help us with inflammation or make it a little bit easier, a little more enjoyable. So today's topic, ginger. Oh, now I use ginger as a, a spice, as, as a flavor. I use mm -hmm. ginger ale. I've used it on my whole life, you know, especially on airplanes. If I got a little motion sick, give some ginger ale. Takes care of my little tummy. Um, and I have little chews that me and the kids use. They're a little spicy, but we pick them up one of the local markets. And if we're feeling our tummy upset, I'm saying tummy because I, I spend all the time with my two little kids. They're very small, <laughs> so you use our tummy. Um, but I'll take one of those, chew on it. it. Helps so much. So I am excited to talk to you about ginger. So let's start with what the heck is ginger? Yeah, so ginger is a flowering plant. We don't always realize that it actually produces flowers, Ooh. but it does. And if you look it up, if you just like do a Google image search of ginger, you will see the plant and it has this nice yellow flower that comes off of the plant itself. Uh, we are most familiar with the ginger rhizome, which is a more of a biological term for root of the ginger. And that is what we use in um, cooking and um, food and drinks, even companies that are making products for our home or cosmetics also use ginger for coloring benefits for, for we know that it's a very strong flavor and uh, scent sometimes. So they use it in a variety of ways and you can find it in a lot of different places. Um, but I will show you, I have my example. This is what the ginger root looks like. That's what I normally see at the store, that right there. Yes. So you can find the ginger root in the produce section. It's going to be usually in the center of the produce section because it's not refrigerated. It is a dry good. Usually you find it by the onions and uh, shallots and garlic and potatoes in that area, typically. And it can be really, really big. So if you find a piece that's really huge, what you can do is, and that's what I did for this one, is I broke off a piece of it. So if, you, um, if you're not familiar with ginger, I would definitely advise that you stick with a smaller piece because I don't want you buying something and then kind of scratching your head wondering what to do with it. So just take a small piece of it and they're still going to charge you by the weight of it. So you're not going to be losing money. It's just you're paying less. So I would definitely say grab a smaller chunk. Um, but this is what it looks like. And you can find it in your produce section. Now, how long does one of those last? Can I just stick it in the closet and keep it for a while? Um, it lasts for quite a while. My favorite way to make sure it lasts even longer, though, is I peel it. Usually um, you can peel it with the spoon. You don't need a knife. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, the skin itself is really soft. So I take the back of a spoon and I will peel it and, um, I'll just kind of drop this in right now since I know I was going to mention it anyway, but I'm going to do a cooking demo using ginger in the Facebook group on Thursday. So Ooh, if you guys awesome. are already in the Facebook group, yeah, if you're already in the Facebook group, I'm going to be going live on Thursday at 12 PM Eastern. So you can jump on there. If you're not in the Facebook group yet. Make sure when you ask to join that you answer all the questions because I'm filtering out bots and people that don't actually want to be in the group. So uh, make sure you answer all the questions and you will be admitted into the group. And I'm going to be using Ginger. And what's the name of the demo. group? We forgot to tell them in case they're new. <laughs> what's the group called? It is Plant Powered Kidneys. So you can yes. search Plant Powered Kidneys on Facebook um, and it should pop up. You can even Google Plant Powered Kidneys Facebook and it'll pop up there too. So uh, this is what I'm going to be using on Thursday at 12 p.m. Eastern to do a cooking demo and teach you guys some more tips and tricks on using ginger. Now, about your storage question, after mm -hmm. I peel it, I will wrap it tightly in aluminum foil and then I put it in a freezer bag and I put it in the freezer and it can uh -huh. stay good in the freezer for a long time, like six months. So That's what Star says. She good. stores it in the freezer. Yes. Yes. Stars on it. Oh yeah. Star, star knows this too. <laughs> so, uh, absolutely. You can store it for a long time in the freezer. I, 
I do recommend peeling it beforehand. That way, when you do need it, you take it out of the freezer. You don't have to worry about that. When it's frozen, you can grate it. So that's usually how people will take it because like you mentioned, the ginger candies or chews that you get can be spicy. Mm -hmm. This is that spice. So if it's something that you're sensitive to, it makes it easier to put into a recipe if you grate it. So that way you're really cutting down the risk of anybody biting into a big chunk of ginger. <laughs> yeah, I actually purchased yeah. some at a local market that is already grated. And I can just mm -hmm. sprinkle a little bit into my stir fry, throw vegetables on the stove, mix them up, throw a little bit of that in there. And it, it doesn't take much. It's such a strong, potent flavor that a little bit goes a long way, which I love because that means I'm saving money by not using a whole bunch. Yeah. And then I saw Gloria had mentioned about the ginger or garlic puree. So this is another option that you can get to have ginger on Boom. hand and you can keep it in the fridge. Um, it's already really, really finely minced up for you. And you can do a tablespoon of this, a teaspoon of this. It's basically equivalent measurements. Um, I will say I did see some in the grocery store that were in not in the refrigerated section uh, that were just kind of out with the rest of the produce that looked similar to this. They had phosphate additives and we've talked about yes. phosphorus before. So anytime you get something that's packaged, that's some, something that is, has a container, has nutrition information, here we go. Mm -hmm. This one does not have added phosphorus in it or added potassium. Um, but I'm just giving you guys a warning that you want to check the label because some of them might. But once you get it cleared, this is a great option to keep it on hand. And then it cuts down that work that you need to do um, instead of the root. So it's really a time saver. Yeah, and with as powerful as that stuff is, that tube is actually pretty big. That probably that would last oh, me yeah. probably six months at least. I would <laughs> let's see. So it says there are twenty three teaspoons in this tube. So typically, a recipe will call for anywhere from a teaspoon to maybe a tablespoon, but that could be kind of high um, yeah. because again, a little goes a long way. So this would definitely last for quite a while, depending on how often you use it. Is there another format oh. or is, are those the two that you're showing today? You know there is. Oh, yeah. No, I've got more. <laughs> <laughs> I went shopping the other day and I was like grabbing all the ginger stuff. I mean, I already See, I'm learning. Some, I, like, I like ginger. Ginger and garlic <laughs> and all that. Yeah. But, but I just kind of, I really don't know what I'm looking for. So this is great for me. I'm learning too. Good. So another thing that's really easy that a lot of people are familiar with is in the actual spice area of the grocery store. Uh -huh. So you can get it like this where it's just in the container, already good to go, ground ginger. Um, it's really easy. And a little of this goes a long way as well. The equivalent when we're looking from fresh to ground or powdered is about for one teaspoon of fresh, it's about a fourth of a teaspoon for the powder. So again, pretty potent stuff and a little goes a long way, but with any of your spices, and this is kind of a bigger tip when it comes to your spices in general, they're usually good for about six months. So even if you do have ginger from like two or three years ago, mom, I'm looking at you, <laughs> this might need to be refreshed. <laughs> My mom does that and she knows it. And every time I go to the house, I'm looking at her spices from like 1990 and I'm telling her, I don't think these have any flavor in them anymore. They, they definitely lose their flavor and their potency. So about mm. six months, you want to refresh your spices. Awesome. So what is the nutritional information of ginger? You were talking well, a little bit about, you know, the serving size being yeah. about a tablespoon. Yeah. So there's, it, there's, we're looking generally at a teaspoon when we're talking about like the most standard amount. Oh. That's the most typical amount used. So with it, I mean, right off the bat, you need to know it's not high in sodium. It's not high in potassium. It's not high in phosphorus. It is kidney friendly. So it is really a great thing. And that's a great thing about almost, I mean, pretty much the majority of spices are that they are kidney friendly because they're not high in these, in these different values that we're concerned about with uh, kidney disease because we don't use them so much in such great quantities. They're part of a recipe, but they're not the whole recipe. So you can see here, James has the nutrition label up that it really doesn't have much of anything. It does have a little bit of potassium, but you guys, 
23 milligrams That's of nothing. potassium is nothing. Yeah, it's nothing. It's it's so small. So it, like 1% of your daily need if you are on a restriction, like 1%. So very, very minimal, not to be really counted towards anything related to your intake of potassium. So nutritionally, we don't need to worry about it in those big components. What you do want to think about is that you're actually adding antioxidants into your diet Ooh. by putting in some of this spice. So it's really, really helpful to include something like this because you're not worrying about those things that we typically talk about, but you get the benefits that we hear about in all over the place when it comes to something like antioxidants. Yep. Now, when it comes to ginger, so we looked at a bunch of different for, uh, formats of it. We had the, the shaker, the powder one, the last one you showed. Mm -hmm. That's what I have. I think it's the same mm -hmm. brand. I think I got mine from Whole Foods. It's your Whole Foods okay. or Target. <laughs> <laughs> but are they are they all about the same, like the paste, uh, the sprinkle one? Is it, do you, Are they both about the same on a teaspoon or is one of them more potent than the other and you use a little bit less? You know, I guess it's the serving definitely sizes. Going to yeah, so the powder or the dried is going to be the most potent. And that's with typically with most herbs. Anytime you have a dried herb, it's usually just a fraction of what the fresh herb would be. So fresh ginger would be like upwards of a tablespoon. The uh, powdered could be the teaspoon. If, it, if a recipe calls for a teaspoon of fresh or a teaspoon of fresh ginger, you could do a quarter of a teaspoon of ground. So it really with the ground compared to the fresh or the paste, the paste and the fresh are equivalent. It's just the preparation that they've done for you. Yeah. And Victoria um, here says spice the, is life. My dad always said that a little spice boosts intelligence too. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I think it's so great to add spice into it. And then the one other one I forgot to mention is, um, uh, ginger ale, which is another oh. option. You want to yes. make sure that it includes real ginger. So just because it's called mm -hmm. ginger ale, usually, you know, marketing, they're always a fan of bragging about what they've done. So they're going to say made with real ginger. And that's mm -hmm. how, you know, there's another option and this is ginger beer, but this is non-alcoholic. So even though it's called mm -hmm. ginger beer, it's stronger in ginger compared to the soda compared to ginger ale. So if you can handle a little more spice, um, you can maybe upgrade from the ginger ale to the ginger beer. And this one does say that it includes ginger root and then ginger flavorings as well. So oh, and you you got that here in the potent. state in the in mm -hmm. the oh wow I've never seen that. Yeah. Awesome. So. Uh, I think this is really, really great. And I love ginger and spice. So I prefer, like I said, I prefer that that stronger version. I think um, I saw a commercial for ginger ale. I'm guessing it was, um, oh shoot, that green can. But I saw somebody came out with like yes. a ginger ale bold. <laughs> and the bold I think is probably comparable to ginger beer. Uh -huh. I haven't tried it, I can't say for sure, but that's kind of my feeling when they're emphasizing like this has more ginger flavor and more ginger taste that it probably yep. is similar to ginger beer. Yep. And Kathy's asking the question, are there brands that we can look for that have r real ginger? I'll tell you, Kathy, I know you have to get real ginger, especially if you're doing it because your stomach's upset. All the other ones yeah. is ginger flavor. They all say real ginger, real big right on the front because they're bragging mm -hmm. that they got the real stuff. So it's really easy to see. Um, there's the green one. I think it starts with a V. I want to say Vernon's ginger ale oh or yeah yeah like yeah that, that yeah. one's made with real ginger uh mm -hmm. that's one i always grab because it's a reasonable price when i go yeah. to the grocery store <laughs> yeah i i don't really know too many of the brands uh canada dry yeah star yeah there we go star up. saying canada dry yeah that that's was what my, that's that why my bold. wife loves canada dry there's cans of it in the in the kitchen right now yeah the <laughs> other thing too that i've seen a few comments about is um ginger tea. And I was looking yes. at that and I thought about grabbing some of the store, but really, really big warning to you guys, just because the label says ginger tea doesn't mean that that's the only thing in there. Because I started kind of poking around at some labels and I'll be sharing this in my stories on, on social media later this week from the pictures I took in the store. Um, but there were some that just said ginger tea, but then when I looked at the back, it included a lot of other like herbal things to it, including licorice. And oh, I was like, okay, well, nope. yeah, 
Yeah. yeah. So I was like, I really wish that I really wish the box would be a little more descriptive <clears> on the <throat> front. Um, I did find I did find I think one of them that really when I looked at the back, it only had ginger labeled. So that was better. So when you look at your teas, make sure that it's really minimal when it comes to the different herbs and things that are in there because you don't know what you're signing up for until you read that whole description in the back. And remember, not everything herb wise is good for the kidneys. So we want to be yeah. really, really careful with that. And there is such a thing as overdosing, which we can talk mm -hmm. about, you know, the dosing and, and what that looks like too. Yeah. For anyone who's new here or, or didn't hear, hear it in any of the, the previous shows where we've mentioned it, Black licorice, real licorice, is not kidney friendly. It is actually highly toxic for kidney patients, and it can easily become highly toxic for healthy people too. So that's definitely a great thing to look for and seeing things like black licorice or real licorice in there, that's a no-no for kidney patients. So what are some of the benefits of ginger? And we have, um, oh, I don't wanna butcher her name, Canero, I'm going to guess. Um, she I wants to know specifically them. for dialysis, and I'm going to guess helping with upset tummies or not feeling too well. But what are the benefits of ginger? Yeah, so the the most proven, which I'm sure almost everybody has heard about through various forms of media or friends and family, is that ginger is known to help with nausea. So mm -hmm. they've used it for pregnancy nausea. They use it for like medication side effects. Um, I used it personally when I went on a cruise with my family um, several years ago. And uh, that was something that was helpful for me at that time. So it really is proven to help with nausea. Other than that, there's other theoretical benefits that haven't really quite been proven yet. And when I say proven, I mean like tested through and through, mm -hmm. specifically looking at people who have kidney issues to make sure that it's safe and effective. So they're looking at the potential that it can help with blood pressure. So it might have an effect in improving blood pressure. There's a possibility it can help with type two diabetes and, and blood sugar control. There is a possibility it can help with osteoarthritis. And there's even a possibility it can help with migraines and headaches, but there's limited research here and there's not enough to come out and for people to say, for sure, this is what it will do. I mean, some people will like, trust me, if people can get out, get away with marketing and not prove, <laughs> yeah. right? And I say prove, we, we talk about prove, we're talking about actual studies for a population of people because mm -hmm. it doesn't, it doesn't mean enough for one person to try it and for them to see a result, to be like, this is how it works for everybody, because that is just a single case study. That is, we don't know how it's gonna affect a person next to them or a person with this or a person with that. So we need to be really careful just because we hear it from somebody saying this helped me with something doesn't mean that's how it's gonna be for everybody. And I think we're gonna get into the risks, so we can, we can kind of jump yeah. into that, but there definitely are some risks that are involved and you want to be aware of if you do include ginger. Yeah. And what are those risks? Cause, or, or, or actually there was one more question about benefits and I've actually heard this, but I've heard it online. And as we all know, anyone can say anything on social media and <laughs> you gotta research it all to figure out if it's true. Does ginger help with your immune system? So ginger has the antioxidants that has a flavonoid known as gingerol. That's like, think of it as like the active ingredient. This can be supportive of your Im immune system, but it doesn't boost. There's no food. There's no supplement. There's nothing out there that actually boosts your immune system. So anytime you see a company say it boosts your immune system, like oh, that term just drives me crazy because there's mm -hmm. nothing, nothing proven to boost. Support your immune system, there's that. But actually boost it, not, not a thing. So the research with ginger and immune systems is still limited, but I, it's, I could not say that it boosts your immune, immune system. Yep, yep. So I, I think, to me, the best thing I've done, I think that has helped my immune system is eating healthy, 
being as healthy as I can, you know, getting some exercise yeah. and just doing the basic things like washing my hands. I have not gotten sick since I was diagnosed. And I was worried about getting the flu or something like that, you know, pre-COVID days. Um, and eating healthy, just healthy overall, I think has really been the thing that's helped me the most with feeling better and being more, less susceptible to catching something, you know, washing my hands and all that. Yeah, so anyone out there really worried is. about their immune system, that, that would be my yeah. recommendation, but I'm not a doctor. Yeah. No, but, but I mean, you, you make a great point that you're talking about this like umbrella of lifestyle and diet mm -hmm. and just overall health and all of these things. It's, it's basically this huge, like smorgasbord of all these habits and things that you do. It's not like we can cherry pick one thing and say, Mm -hmm. this is what did it, or this is what prevents this, or this is what caused this. It, it's really just this huge collection of, um, of a lot of different things. And we can look at, at sometimes the, maybe this one has a little bit more of an impact than others, but it's still, it's still this, uh, huge, we can't just pick one thing. So, yep. um, I saw, I saw another comment run through and I was thinking about saying something about it and now I forgot but if it pops up. I can back, scroll back I, and see them all on my end. <laughs> I think I probably, I, I can. Oh, okay, okay. So Debbie had mentioned about reducing inflammation. So yes, yes, yes. Ginger, yeah, so ginger possibly, this is another one that it's possibly helpful for, but more research needs to be done. The only proven thing that ginger is known to do is help with nausea. So that, that's it, everything else that you hear just keep in mind that it's a possibility, but it's not proven. Okay. And I posted this on my stories um, on, on social media earlier this week. You can go to pub, P U B M E D, pubmed.gov. And that is the database of mm -hmm. all research studies. So if you ever want to find out if something's actually been researched and proven, that's where you want to go. So you can search ginger and inflammation, ginger and diabetes, ginger and whatever, or anything else. I did a search of apple cider vinegar and gout, came back with yep. zero search results, zero, meaning this has not been studied. There is no evidence to support this idea. So if you ever want to look up something, and this is like totally getting tangential, but I really want to give That's you guys okay. a lot of resources. I want, I want you guys to, to feel good and knowing what you're looking for and finding good resources for that too. Yeah, and I'll tell you, that website, every doctor I visit, they have a computer in their office. They look everything up there. If I say, hey, I read online, blah, 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 blah. They go, okay, hold on, because they can't memorize everything. And they do a quick search, and they'll be like, eh, no, that's not real. Or they have a bunch of stuff. They're like, okay, it looks like there's some research. Let me look into it. I'll get back to you. I'll send you an email. Because I, I email with all my doctors, um, even yeah. before we started doing all the telemedicine stuff. Uh, they're very helpful at, at, you know, keeping in touch and following up that way. But yeah. that is a fantastic website. Because you guys, I know, I'm a kidney patient. We want there to be some magic pill out there. I'm <laughs> holding my headphone case. But we want some bottle that has a magic pill that we can pop and things will just be better. They don't work. Or they don't exist out there. And you see, it's not the, yeah, it's not the they're way. scams. They're trying to yeah. reach into our pockets our hard work and money, they're trying to take it from us. And these are great sites you could go, you can look, see what's in there. And maybe there is some research. A lot of times they'll take a little bit of research and they extrapolate yeah. something that does not make sense. It does not yeah. hold up to, to peer research or anything like that, a peer review. They'll take a little bit of something, extrapolate something incorrectly, and then try to use that to convince you to buy their mm -hmm. pill, buy their plan, buy their book. Mm -hmm. or you don't need that stuff. No, I mean, there's some there's some studies that are paid for by these companies because they oh, want yeah. to have this come out. And another really, um, really quick way for you to verify the information uh, or verify the evidence of the information is go through the research article. You don't have to read it top to bottom mm -hmm. like I do, um, but you can scroll all the way down to the conclusion and read. And usually in the last few sentences, they might say something like further research needs to be done to, for this to be proven effective or for this yep. to be proven safe. Um, and, and they'll say that this is just a study. This is not the study. This is not everything. 
So it's, it's really, really important to look at that kind of stuff because even the scientists are saying, we're just one piece of information. Now in science, you have to repeat that experiment and nobody really mm -hmm. cares about repeating experiments. So it's really, it takes a long time to prove this stuff. So if you guys ever yep. watch um, Adam Ruins Everything, he does a really oh, fun I episode love that about- show. Yeah. He, have you seen the episode about uh, research and science? I can't remember, there's so many of them. He reminds me of myself when I was a little kid in school because I <laughs> loved to read and I would read stuff and I was the pain to the teacher. They're sitting there, <laughs> Christopher Columbus discovered America. Teacher, how do you discover something if there's already people there? And then I would ask all these questions a little kid should not be asking. You know, what is what does this mean when he did this? You know, yeah, like, yeah. Ah! Okay, yeah. we're changing the topic. <laughs> well, I think I think he does a great job talking about the struggles with science and with research and really what you need to know about like some of those intricacies that we can't just take take it for face value or assume that that is exactly what's going on or it's proven mm -hmm. across the world. So anyway, um, that's yep. a really great place if you guys want to look up more information for what's really proven and uh, that can be really, really helpful to, to learn. Yeah, so before we jump into the the risk, um, Doug says, hey, I heard there's gonna be a bionic kidney. The kidney project is going to be here on Dad Vice TV. We're scheduling the date now, probably oh, close wow. to Thanksgiving. Yeah, we're gonna have them on here. So I've already said them. hey, here's all the questions. I got a bunch of them. Let's oh plan gosh, for a long yeah. time. I've, I'm gonna have them here on Dad Vice TV and we're gonna be talking about the device, the challenges they, they had, um, where they are, and what lies ahead for the implantable artificial kidney. So that's a great question, Doug. They're gonna be here. Keep an eye on dadvicetv.com. I keep posting the schedule up there of the upcoming shows. And as soon as we have the date for them dialed in, boom, it's going up there and I'm gonna be getting people all excited talking about it. <laughs> but yeah, right now- Yeah, that's so exciting. I'm gonna make sure that I, uh keep that in mind. Yeah. So right now we got gin though. These are things that you guys can do now <laughs> yes. to help make yes. your life better, make food taste great. So what are the risks that kidney patients have to worry about or be concerned or aware of with ginger? So the number one thing that I will say that you really ginger is part of the diet it's not something i don't advise i think i saw somebody ask about like the supplement i don't advise taking it as a supplement mm -hmm. um that is a way that people do take it but with kidney disease the number one thing it can do or not even just with kidney disease but the number one potential interaction it can have is it can affect your blood thinning so if you're on an anticoagulant mm -hmm. which a lot of people with kidney issues are on so like warfarin mm -hmm. coumadin if you're on something like that it can interfere with your medication and put you at a higher risk of bruising and bleeding so that right there number one is like the biggest risk factor to be aware of we are be aware of and that's also why I don't advise it as being something like a supplement because there's no point in taking it like a pill. I'm talking about including it as a spice in your diet. Yeah. We're talking about cutting out salt and getting more flavor in. That's how I wanna really help encourage you guys to include it as something as part of your diet, not another pill to take. That is the last mm -hmm. thing I would ever really want to uh, recommend for you guys. So yeah, and it's, that a, it's an awesome spice for adding variety. Because you know, yeah. everyone knows my go-to meal is stir fry. I still gotta. I'm I'm starting to try to make some new foods. I haven't been too successful. I keep watching TV, and that's not good when you're trying to cook something. <laughs> I burn a lot. Uh, <laughs> but ginger is great because I can add it to my stir fry, and boom, the flavor is so mm. different just by adding a little bit of that. So it's a great spice to add to your food so that you can enjoy more. If we eat the same thing all the time and all tastes the same, that's not gonna make oh, you too happy. We no. love it. When we make a meal, we wanna be like, hey, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, we're talking about how to include it in the diet and that's what I really wanna focus on. As far as the risks, there are, and that's where I was kind of going with the supplement thing because mm -hmm. if you take uh, upwards of five grams, usually the therapeutic or the benefits are seen around two to three grams a day. 
And again, uh, this, the different exchanges are like one to two or two to three teaspoons um, or like less than a teaspoon of ground ginger. So it's very, very small amount. Mm -hmm. But there has been people reporting side effects from more than five grams a day, and that can include the GI upset. So you're taking ginger oh. to help with nausea, but then what's the point if it causes other problems like gas or heartburn? Another one that's common is um, mouth irritation. And if you think about it, it kind of makes sense because it's such a spicy herb. It's such a spicy flavor that if you do take a lot of it, of course, it's going to irritate your mouth. It's like drinking hot sauce. I mean, yeah. it, it can irritate. So that is definitely something to be aware of and you don't want to overdo it. So uh, with all of those other things in mind, just just realize that there is such a thing as too much of a good thing. And a little goes a long way. You don't need a lot. Yeah. You can add it as part of your recipe, part of your ingredients with everything else. It's just there to add a little bit of flavor. So how, how would you recommend someone new to ginger work it into their diet? I think one of the best ways is stir fry. You know, we've talked about stir fry being so easy that you can throw it all together. And the flavor of ginger works really well with garlic. Another one of my absolute favorite recipes is golden milk. Has anybody, I will ask the audience, if anybody has heard of golden milk, what that is, because mm. I'm kind of curious. Now we got to give them about everybody. 20 seconds from the time we asked the question. So have you guys heard of golden milk? Now I have that have where you go and you get it is my favorite type of food. My kids love it. My wife mm. loves it. Uh, we miss when we used to be able to go to buffets with it. That <laughs> type of food. Because, oh my goodness, I'm just in heaven eating so much great stuff. So people are asking, golden milk? Yes. Do you guys know what golden milk is? Anyone heard of it? Or has <laughs> okay. anybody made it themselves? <laughs> I've never made it myself. We have, oh, now we're okay. getting a number of yeses, uh, some yeses and I don't like it. Here we go, Kelly. Turmeric milk. Yes. Yes. <laughs> there That's we go. something that... Other people think about because turmeric is more, turmeric. more of the main component. Yeah, I think it's kind of like tomato, tomato. Uh, <laughs> but that is another big part of the main component. But it is so easy to make. I actually made some last night and I'm going to be sharing that recipe later uh, on social media later this week to kind of go along with this theme of ginger because I did include ginger with it. I used the ground ginger. So that was... And again, it was just a little bit, a quarter of a teaspoon. So a little goes a long way. It doesn't take a lot. And when you're making something like golden milk, you don't want, you know, you don't want big chunks or anything in there. Yeah. So it, you don't need to put a lot in there. And for those that are wondering, the my favorite type of food, Indian. You go to an Indian restaurant, they always have golden milk available. <laughs> hmm. I, I mean... I've only made it at home. I have not, I don't think I've ever had it out anywhere. Um, oh yeah, it's so easy to make. So if you're ever, especially, I was just talking, we were talking about this right before we went live, mm -hmm. but another thing, another reason I want to talk about ginger right now is because it's so, it's in so many different flavors of food this time of year. It's a warming spice. So I think like uh, gingerbread, pumpkin pie, mm -hmm. uh, any kind of apple spice that has ginger in it. Ginger is a very, a much more popular spice this time of year. And the golden milk is so nice to have at night. I had it last night as like my pre bedtime, you know, that whole idea of having a warm cup of milk, yes. a warm glass of milk before bed. So I heated over, I heated my um, cashew milk. I have cashew milk right now. I heated that over the stove and then I added my turmeric. I added my ginger, my cinnamon, and you want to add a pinch of black pepper. Black pepper mm -hmm. helps with the absorption of turmeric of the curcumin which is the active ingredient in turmeric it helps the absorption into your system so you add all that together you let it warm up you don't need to bring it to a boil or anything just when it's nice and warm you pour it into a glass and you're done and it takes literally like five minutes super super easy and it just is the milk and the spices that's it yeah, and, and Ginger's mentioning carrot soup with ginger. Another oh, yeah. food. Oh, I love that. So I good. didn't even think about so it. Good. 
Yeah. Especially this time of year with the fall and the winter coming. Oh, sit down with a nice mm-hmm. warm bowl. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All the squashes. <laughs> so the, the different types of squashes that you use, you could put some ginger on there, have that as a nice warming spice. Oh, it's so good. It is so good. Yeah, and Doug asks, what about ginger supplements? I think he might have missed our little conversation a few moments ago. Uh, skip the supplements. Add it to your food. Enjoy the ginger. And you don't want to take too much because there are a few little um, things you got to watch out for. If you take the supplement, you might be a little gassy. One of the little side effects. We don't want that. So let's enjoy yeah. our meal. Add your ginger to your food. Make some of that carrot yeah. soup with ginger. <laughs> and if you if you don't enjoy it, I would say, because I know someone said they didn't like the golden milk that they tried, I would say I would just cut back on the spices and make it a little bit lighter or add some more milk to dilute the spice flavor of it. That way it's not as strong. Um, one of the first times I made it, I made it really strong because I like the flavor. But then when I drank it like to about a third of the way, I just added more milk and warmed it back up. So it was like my second cup. That was a little weaker. Um, yep. But it is, yeah, it is so easy. And the supplements, again, not a fan of, if you, even if you're saying, I don't like it, I'll just take the supplement instead. I would say, let's look at some other ways that you can change your diet and get benefits from that instead Mm -hmm. of the supplements that come with the risks. Again, blood thinning, if you're on any kind of blood thinner, that's a really, really big uh, warning sign. And you'll see that if you look up ginger and any kind of uh, ginger adverse effects or ginger side effects or caution with ginger, anything like that you'll probably come across that too. Uh, And Joyce has a great suggestion. For those of you that don't want to use regular milk from a cow, maybe you don't want the animal protein, a nut milk is great. Almond milk, cashew milk, um, whatever you like that's in your area, find that, add your ginger, add a little bit of black pepper. And someone also said they also add, Becky says she also adds cinnamon to it. Oh, I love cinnamon. Oh yeah, cinnamon. That's a good part of it. Yeah. 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 Bridget says she uses almond milk. Boom, boom, boom. There we go. Yeah. Perfect. (laughs) Perfect. So you've got almond milk, you've got cashew milk, you've got oat milk, rice milk, even some coconut milk. I know some people like to add a little bit of the canned coconut milk because it's really, really rich. So it really makes it a very thick, indulgent drink. So feel free if, and especially if you're somebody that needs to add a little bit more calories, if you need to gain some weight, which I know a lot of people Uh, on or with kidney disease do because you're restricting so much calories and you're pushing back so much from food. So something that's high calorie, like some canned coconut milk could definitely go in there and it doesn't take a a lot to make a good effect. Yeah. Awesome. Now, a lot of people have talked about uh, making tea, ginger tea, almost said coconut tea. Um, Do you have like a simple recipe for those that want to make ginger tea at, at home? How would they do that? Because I'm thinking it's got to be kind of easy because yeah. of how potent oh, yeah. ginger is. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And I think it definitely goes a much, it goes much longer, a, a better way. What am I trying to say here? It's much easier, <laughs> via my words, it's much easier to just use a piece of the ginger root itself than having to comb through the ginger tea bags that, like I said in the very beginning, Mm -hmm. might have something in there that isn't good for you, like licorice or other herbal remedies that aren't safe for kidney disease. So I think it's easy to just peel and cut a piece of the ginger root up, put it in some hot water, typically not boiling. You want to do hot, but not boiling and let it steep for five to 10 minutes or so. And you can kind of taste it and see if the flavor gets to be too strong or not and kind kind of go from there. But it's so easy just to use this. I mean, why not? And this is cheap too. This is really cheap. So yep. you can definitely have this on hand and and uh, save a lot of money. Awesome. Now, so we've so we talked about the ginger. We mentioned a few other spices that are mm-hmm. good with it. Uh, do you mm-hmm. have like maybe? Hey, these are the good ones to think of that use with ginger. Um, or as an alternative, maybe ginger's a little too spicy for them. Um, you can always use a little less, uh, but maybe they're like, mm-hmm. yeah, I want to, what are some other spices? Yeah. Well, I, one of the reasons I love the golden milk recipe is that it has so many of those spices in it that are potentially anti-inflammatory and can, are just really good and warming and tasty. So turmeric is always a good pairing 
for ginger. It's not, to me, it's not as spicy. So it's something that you can use a little bit more of. Turmeric also adds a really pretty, that golden color. That's where the turmeric, or that's what comes from that. Uh, I use turmeric with my tofu to do like a scrambled egg replacement. So that helps with more of the visual appeal, especially for people that maybe are trying to transition away from animal proteins and having a hard time. If it looks more comparable, it's it's uh, more welcoming, I would say. Yeah. So turmeric is one. As I mentioned, with turmeric comes black pepper because black mm -hmm. pepper helps with the absorption of the active ingredient. And you'll often see that even in the turmeric supplements, which I'm more of a fan of the curcumin supplements um, because the curcumin is the actual active ingredient. So to say, I keep saying that, like it is the antioxidant powerhouse of turmeric. So if you do a supplement and I do have some people on curcumin supplements, mm -hmm. but I want to give the caveat that the curcumin can affect your iron levels. So with anemia, if you have problems Ooh. there, you want to be careful with that first, make sure that is taken care of and then look into curcumin. That it is very good note. Because yeah. of all the symptoms I've I've had, and I had all of them, the anemia, low mm -hmm. iron, low red blood cell count, low hemoglobin, that was the worst. Because just just opening your eyes, breathing, trying to stand up yeah. is just so difficult and exhausting, and you can't get rid of it. So yeah, yeah that that's really good to know because you know, that's definitely and something we don't want to mess with is our iron levels because it. Causes right. so and many other I, issues. I tell a lot of people that anemia is one of the first things that we have to take care of because mm. your red blood cells are getting oxygen to your kidneys. And how can your kidneys do their job if they don't get the oxygen that they need? Just like yeah. we need oxygen to live. Our kidneys need, need oxygen to live. So anemia is preventing that. That is really something that you want to focus on right away. Make sure you're on the right kind of supplement. And I know we'll if we haven't already, I know we'll be talking about anemia more. I'm sure we have. Uh, but I we'll, think we we'll have once or episodes. twice, but it's it never hurts to yeah. to talk about it again because uh, not everyone can find all those videos. And if you guys do yeah. want to go back and see our, our library, go to dadvicetv.com. Up at the top menu, there's a live shows and guest menu. Click that. You'll see Jen. All of her appearances are all there. There's also... The other Dr. Butt, um, Dr. Rosansky, other people that have been on here, but all of Jen stuff, all right there, easy to find. And you get all this great information. And if you're you're standing in line, oh, you're standing in line next week or, or this weekend to vote, pull yeah. out your cell phone and, and watch some of Jen's past um, visits here and become educated learn all sorts of great stuff yes jen voted today i've got I my did. where did i put them? i was showing her earlier i have both yeah. of my ballots my wife and mine we got them all in here we're gonna go drop them off in the ballot box tomorrow and get our sticker yeah yeah exactly that's what it's for right the sticker <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> so you mentioned black pepper um did we were Turn there right. other, uh, Yep, and, and um, I don't want to say because I pronounce it wrong every single time. I was I was brought <laughs> up in the military. Like I got the accents from everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. Okay, so there is also cinnamon, which uh, cinnamon is a great again a warming spice. It is complementary to ginger, and again another one that's found really commonly. Cinnamon is probably one of the most common spices mm. year round, but especially in the holidays. And if we think about, again, ginger, gingerbread, and all those different kind of goodies that we get, it all folds into that category. Cinnamon mm -hmm. has been proven to help with managing blood sugars. So I always recommend to people who are struggling with blood sugar control to just start adding some cinnamon to their food. It's really, really easy. Cinnamon, when you put it in food, has kind of this natural sweetness it brings mm -hmm. out to things. So adding it to like oatmeal or your smoothies or something super easy. And if it's going to help, why not? You know, again, the same thing with ginger and other spices, like you don't need to do a lot, a little goes a long way, but yep. that is another great one that pairs well that you could, you can use for tons of different recipes. And then the other one I wanted to bring up was garlic because oh, garlic favorite. is another one. Yeah. Mine too, <laughs> by far. Uh, but 
Garlic has been shown to help with blood pressure, uh, cholesterol as well, I believe. Uh, it has a lot of great benefits. It goes more into the savory side of things. So like I said, with stir fry, you could do the ginger garlic combo, mm -hmm. maybe yep. with a little red pepper for some different type of heat. Um, great, great mixture. And it puts it onto this other realm of this more savory side of things. Yeah. So I'm going to tell you guys, one of my uses of cinnamon, and I've mentioned this only a few times in some of the past videos. I think we're at like video number 116 or 117 right now. So <laughs> it's somewhere buried in there. I've mentioned at least <laughs> once or twice. One of the things I like to do is I'll scramble some eggs, but I will add just a little bit, a tiny little bit of um, cream cheese to the eggs instead of putting in milk and it makes them mm -hmm. creamy. And then I add cinnamon to it. And I tell you, it tastes like dessert. Mm -hmm. It is my replacement for my beloved and dearly missed Cinnabon. <laughs> so this is with your eggs, you said? Yes, cinnamon in the eggs I, I with a little bit of cream cheese and I mix it up and I scramble it and it is so good. I'll even huh. make it as a snack. Like if I'm like, oh, I want something sweet. And you know, I, I was just, I just did it again last weekend. I was driving through McDonald's to get my kids some stuff. So we're driving like, hey, what do you want to eat? Dad's going to make his stir fry at home. And they're promoting their big cinnamon, cinnamon buns. And I was like, oh, I'm going to go home, make me some cinnamon eggs. And I did, they're delicious. <laughs> I've never heard of that. Now I'm going to have to go try that like right away. Yeah, so it's, it's good to experiment. That's kind of how I learned to cook. I just grab the different things. And I start yeah. mixing and adding. I've now gotten to where I write it down because the beginning I didn't. And there was one day I made this stir fry that was so incredible, I couldn't believe it. And I tried to write down, remember what I did and how much. I can't make it again. Because mm, I was just rough. like, yeah. I was like mixing all sorts of stuff, a little bit of that. Oh, what about a little bit? I'll put a tad, tad honey in there. And oh, it was good. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's definitely something good to get in the habit of, of tracking that. And I tell my clients all the time too, like it's good to it's good to record your food, not just for your own, like for things that mm -hmm. you like and don't like, but for how you react to them, how you feel about it after, even like hours after. I'm like, what the heck did you eat? You know, I was like, oh, I don't know. Like I I personally would have a hard time trying to recall things that I ate if I didn't track it. Yeah. So if we kind of summarize ginger, it's a great spice to use. Mm -hmm. A little goes a long way. We can buy it in a number of different formats. It lasts a long time. Storing it in the, in the freezer is a great place to store it. Um, don't take supplements because you can get too much. You get gas, you can get upset tummy, you can get some other issues. I'm trying to think of what else. I'm trying to, I'm trying to remember what did I just learn over the last hour <laughs> that we've been on so here? So another thing to remember is that the only proven benefit of ginger is it helps with nausea. Everything yep. else take with a grain of salt, not literally, but keep in mind that it's not quite yet proven for everybody across the board. So uh, that's one of the things that's why we're saying don't take it as a supplement because there's really no proven need to take it as a supplement. Um, but there is proven risk of taking too much that it can affect medications, most specifically related to blood thinners. Um, mm -hmm. But it also, I didn't even get into some of the other ones that are minor, but it has potential to affect with some other medications, including diabetic medication. So something to be aware of. And again, why we don't recommend it as a supplement. Yep. And the error grammatical says, fun fact, cinnamon was added to eggs in colonial times. Wow. You, you caught on to something that we all just totally bypass. Well, if you think about it, the colonial people had limited resources, so they had to be creative. That's how mm -hmm. I've learned to cook so far. Limited resources, because I'm afraid to try stuff. I don't want to <laughs> buy something expensive and use a little bit. Like, ah, oh, this is awful. I don't like it. And yeah, there's what, $8. Yeah. Uh, so I'm just experimenting like them. And yeah. it's, oh, it's a little bit of cream cheese because you got to have that creaminess to it. And oh, it is delicious. Mm. Interesting. I'm going to make wonder... some for dinner tonight. 
I wonder if I could do like a tofu substitute with that. If the cream you cheese probably is like, could. Yeah. I mean, there is, there is a tofu or a plant-based cream cheese. There's a few of them out there actually. So it would be like a, a tofu recipe. It'd be higher in protein. Um, Hmm. But it would be interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And a few people have mentioned adding cinnamon to oatmeal. I don't know oh, yeah. about adding ginger, Natalie. Um, I think ginger is a little too potent for me. It had to be I just think, a little tiny bit. I mean, I have seen, so we talked about the golden milk. You could do like a golden oatmeal and you mm -hmm. could do the turmeric. You could do the same spices, probably a little bit less, like a sprinkle of each of them. But you could do the turmeric, the ginger, cinnamon, a little bit of black pepper, and some honey or maple syrup to sweeten it. I bet that would be really good. But oh, yeah. again, yeah, a little bit, you know, if you do, if you go too far, too spicy, not as good, not, not as enjoyable. Um, but I think it would be really great to be used in oatmeal or baked oatmeal. I think now is the time of year to start doing baked oatmeal. So many good things coming this time of year. Mm, I, I love yeah. the fall. That's my probably yeah, my favorite too. time of year. Everything smells good. Yes. Like, mm. Yes. So and I was just so, thinking before I moved, it, we uh -huh. would always talk about this stuff right before right before lunch. And now I moved, and we're talking about this right before dinner. I know. So I don't eat dinner. I eat dinner after the show. <laughs> so my little tummy is like I'm a little hungry because I don't yeah. think I ate lunch today work is like slammed right now we have a big project for the next six weeks and i am slammed i don't think i ate i ate a little breakfast i don't think i ate lunch so i'm a little hungry mm, but yeah, zj definitely. has a great question which is perfect for the group that we have here and for having you a renal dietitian she's trying looking for ways to not get discouraged with her diet and she's stage three and I'll, I'll give my my recommendation first, and we'll see what you have to help, Jen. Okay. Um, for me, it's variety. I mm -hmm. can't just make the same thing with the same flavors all the time, and it's portion control. Sometimes I want to get something that really isn't great for my diet, so I just get a little, little, little tiny piece of it, just a little bit enough to to get that that desire I have satisfied. And then I find substitutions. I, if, if I want a, um, a McChicken sandwich from McDonald's, which I used to love those things. I used to just be driving and be like, I'm going through the drive-thru, get me a gigantic sweet tea or a Dr. Pepper and a couple of those chicken sandwiches. I just love those things. They're like a snack, though they're like 400 mm -hmm. calories each. But I have yeah. my healthy homemade substitution for that. And that, that's my secret to kind of help me stay motivated. Variety, because you got to enjoy the food. Play with spices, kind of like we've talked about here, so you get lots of different flavors. Find some substitutions, and if you really want something, treat yourself, but keep the portion control reasonable. And like, since I didn't eat lunch today, I'm pretty sure I did not eat lunch. I can look at my phone and see, because I put everything in there. Mm -hmm. um, I can have a little bit more for dinner. So it, it's not like eating um, a banana is going to hurt you. Eating a bunch right. of bananas could be bad. But if you got to keep an eye on your potassium, just don't eat a lot of potassium other foods and have half of a banana today. You know, find those kind of little substitutions using portion control. That's my recommendation. What's yours, Jen? It's totally biased, and I can't even hide it. I 100% think that everybody should work with a dietitian. And James, I know you're a really big promoter yes. of this too. 100%. I can't tell you. I mean, I can't tell you the number of clients that I've seen with stage three specifically that I've been able to say, you can eat this, you can eat this, you can eat this, you can eat. Like we go through all this stuff and halfway through our first session, they already are aware of so many foods that they can have because we've talked about what their kidney disease means, what they need to focus on and what is okay for them. And don't go to Dr. Google. That's my other piece of advice. Don't yes, go to Dr. Yes, Google. Yes. Or Dr. Facebook. You, yeah, no, you're all you're going to come across is don't eat this, don't eat that, don't eat this. And it's just a nightmare. And of course you would be frustrated and disappointed and scared because that's all the kind of stuff you get online. So it, it's not, it's not good. It's not motivating. It's not kidney friendly. 
because oftentimes those restrictions are only hurting you. And I'm being a hundred percent says like this, this is very important to know if you restrict too much, you're not helping your kidneys, you're hurting your kidneys. Yep. So it's important to know what you can have and what you should have. So ask your nephrologist for a dietitian. If they say, and I've mentioned this in another video, if they say you don't need a dietitian, this is the quote that you need to use. Okay. Take a second, ready for this. You say, according to Kadigo, K-D-I-G-O, according to Kadigo guidelines, I should see a dietitian as soon as I'm diagnosed with kidney disease. Mm -hmm. Okay. Kadigo is the international, basically the, the, the foundation of recommendations, not just for nutrition, but for taking care of kidney disease in its entirety. So doctors, nephrologists, dietitians who are in renal, we know Cadigo. We know what that means. So if you say Cadigo, and it sounds funny, but we're using the abbreviation. If you say Cadigo, they're going to take a step. They're going to take a second, and they're going to realize that you mean business. And you should mean business because you need to see a dietitian. James, we could do a whole nother section or a mm -hmm. whole nother episode of me just saying this because I am just this. I am so so passionate about this. And yep. yes, I'm a dietitian, and obviously that is, uh, I'm, I'm very biased about this. I can't see everybody though. So it's not like you have to see me. Uh, and, and right now I'm very, very full with clients. So I can't see a lot of more, a lot more people right now anyway. Um, but you got to see a dietitian and talk with your doctor and get that referral to get somebody and, and, and just get started with understanding what you need to pay attention to. Yep. And now if someone asks, can you spell Kadigo. I've seen it before yeah. in, in things. Yeah. I've seen it. Um, and a lot of things yeah. that nephrologists so, will send me have it at the top. And I'm like, oh, mm -hmm. this mean to me, this means this is good. It's been validated. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the kidney Bible. Yeah. That's How do you spell it. that? So, I'm going to type it, put it up on the screen. Yeah. K-D-I-G-O. It's an acronym. If you ask me to say what it stands for, I've been tested on this so many times and um, I always call it Cadigo. So it's hard for me to remember kidney disease initiative for guideline initiative guidelines and outcomes, international guidelines and outcomes. Something kidney like disease that. improving global. <laughs> it got cut off. It came up on, on the website. Yeah. Cadigo.org is mm -hmm. their website mm -hmm. and oh yeah well I'll just I've never been to their website but it's got all sorts of great stuff on here yeah a oh, nonprofit yeah. organization developing yeah. and implementing evidence-based clinical practice guidelines in kidney disease and that's what you want to know and that's what you want to learn about and that's what you want to go to your doctor about and say hey according to Cadigo like they're saying this is in my best interest for me to see a dietitian right now. Mm -hmm. And if they still say no, get a second referral. Like don't play around with this, you guys. Stage one, yeah. stage two, stage three. Don't sit back and say, okay, I must not need one. Take take charge of your health and go get another, go see another doctor. Mm -hmm. Go look for a nephrologist that is um, interested in plant-based because plant-based is becoming a bigger thing right now with uh, so that you know that they're a little bit, I, I would say ahead of the curve of mm -hmm. um, the research find someone that right away from the very first appointment with them that when you say, can you refer me to a dietitian that they don't fight you on it and they pull out that referral pad and they say, absolutely. And if they don't know a dietitian, well, you guys know me, you guys know that I have references on my website. So uh, you know right that you here. can pull up. There you Jen go. Yeah. Yes. There's the URL. Yes. Yeah. Right there. <laughs> and any doctor guys, any doctor can refer mm -hmm. you to a dietitian and, and the referral helps, um, at least for me, my insurance covered it when it was referral. And we use my extreme obesity. And of course, I don't wanna say that I am obese, but my doctor was like, look, you you're, technically you're obese and your insurance will pay for this. I was like, okay, I'm obese, Yeah. put it down there. Right, um, right. Other things like my, my uh, blood sugar wasn't, I was pre-diabetic, that's another reason that they can refer mm -hmm. you to a dietitian. There's plenty of them, but if they won't refer you or you can't find one, 
I you know, go to Jen's website. There's also some links in the description of this video. Find one. Even if you have to pay out of pocket, it is so worth it. And a renal dietitian isn't like a regular doctor where you're you're you seem to be going there forever for the rest of your life. You a renal dietitian is like a professor. They're going to look mm -hmm. at your lifestyle, your labs, your health. They're going to work with you. What do you like? What do you not like? What do you typically eat? And they're going to help you make those lifestyle changes. And you may just visit them a number of times and then do some on your own and then check back in with them, learn some more, run on your own. Uh, they are a resource where a doctor, I kind of go in there. They talk a whole bunch, and then you leave hoping you learned a little bit. Renal mm -hmm. dietitian is the exact opposite. All you're going to do is learn, learn, learn. It's going to help you enjoy life, raise your quality of life, and it'll help you feel the best you can, which is fantastic. So it's worth it. If you have to pay out of pocket, go do it. I That's, that's my recommendation. And then yeah. save your receipt. And see if you can submit it to your insurance. I've done yeah. that too. And I've talked, yeah. I call them on the phone. I talk to them. I say, no, here's why I'm doing it. I'm trying to be healthy. I'm trying not to be in the ER again and in the ICU. And mm -hmm. I've got, I've talked to them enough and gotten them to approve every single visit covered Good. through my Good. insurance. Yeah. 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 You can absolutely do that. <laughs> okay. I do need to get running. We yes, are, yes, yes. We actually went a little bit over tonight. our hour. I want to thank everyone who's here. Please subscribe to Dadvice TV. If everyone who watches this episode, just this one episode here, if everyone over the next few days subscribes, Dadvice TV will break 100,000 subscribers. Oh my God. It's going to happen. My daughter's birthday is Halloween, October 31st. I would love to tell her because she's all excited. Daddy, when are you going to get your silver play button? She's so excited. Aww. And I would love to surprise her. So I'm going to get all tearing up talking about that. I would love Aww. to surprise her. So please, if you haven't subscribed, and about 80% of the viewers of the live are not subscribed on YouTube. Hop on over there. Hit the button. Let's hit 100,000 kidney warriors wanting to kick kidney disease to the curb. <laughs> yeah, I think the best thing about subscribing is that once you subscribe on your phone, you get the notification. It pops yes. up and it says, hey, James is live on Dadvice right now. And you just click it and you're taken right to the video. You don't have to yep. wonder what time it is, where it's at. It's just you subscribe and you get that notification. It just makes it so easy. And that's how I jumped on a lot of watching a lot of your shows is because I see that notification. So yes, by the way, I am subscribed <laughs> to Dadvice because why wouldn't I be? <laughs> awesome. And thank you so much for Jen being here. Thank you. It is such a joy always to have you here sharing your information, helping us kidney warriors improve our lives through diet, understanding nutrition and making better choices. Thank you so much, Jen. And thank you everyone thank you. out there. And I'll see you in two nights, Thursday night. Dr. Butt will be here. We're talking about diabetes and kidney disease. And if you don't have diabetes, watching our blood sugar is important with kidney disease because diabetes mm -hmm. is the number one cause of new cases of kidney problems. Ugh. We're going to talk about it and what we can do. All right, everybody. Mm -hmm. Jen and I will see you next Tuesday. I'll see you this Thursday. Bye, everyone. Bye.